We hear the beautiful gospel of Luke today of the angel Gabriel's annunciation to Mary. The annunciation that the Savior's time may well be upon us. It's a major moment in the history of salvation. Now, there is a question that is fairly common among students in middle or high school. It's one of these things I expect to hear from eighth graders or high schoolers. Father Justin, why was Jesus, the Son of God, born in some obscure village in some obscure country of the world? Or in other words, why was Jesus born in that time and place of all possibilities? And it's a fair question. Why wasn't Jesus born in Rome? Or why wasn't he born in ancient Egypt at the very dawn of the written word? You know, indeed, a lot of mythologies say that the greatest of heroes and saviors really need to come from royalty or the social elite. Great people from farming communities are few and far between in ancient storytelling. So, For this question, why was Jesus born to Mary in this time and place? There are basically two answers, as well as one speculative idea. That third thing isn't so much an answer, it's more like a a what if that's worthy of eh, friendly debate around the dinner table tonight. So the first solid answer is the simple one. Why was, Mar- why was Jesus born of Mary in that time and place? Well, the Holy Spirit came to Mary then and there because it was the time. Jesus is fully human, so he could be born to any time, place, society, and people. The Israelites of the Eastern Mediterranean Sea were as validly human as anyone else. So the answer could be that straightforward. Why was Jesus born of Mary in a little town of Bethlehem? Because. And don't ask me because why. I just know a lot of you are just going to itch to say that to me after Mass. The second answer is a little more complex. Jesus was destined to primarily call the lost, the lonely, the poor, and the helpless. Jesus worked with the downtrodden first and foremost. The message of Jesus wouldn't have worked quite as well if he was born of rich parents in a capital city. Now, Jesus really did need to live his life working in the dust like most of us do. He needed to know what poverty felt like, what daily struggle was like, what powerlessness felt like. And if that makes sense to you, you could say, okay, Father Justin, Jesus needed to start at the bottom of society, fair enough. Why not be a carpenter in France or in China? You still haven't answered the question, why Israel? Well, Israel is an immensely unique place. For all intents and purposes, The Jews were the only society around that maintained their belief in one God. The entire rest of the world went the way of polytheism. The little gods and local gods were a dime a dozen. And Jesus, as the true son of the Most High, the key to the salvation of everything, would not have had the monotheistic belief of Judaism to work with anywhere else. Jesus, born of Mary by the power of the Holy Spirit, was in exactly the right time and right place for humanity to begin that new phase of spiritual existence. A Jesus born anywhere else would have had an immense handicap in living out their earthly ministry. All right, they would be seen as a wizard or some sort of common prophet to those people. You know, the son of man would mean next to nothing in a polytheistic society. I am the son of God. Well, that's great. I'm the nephew of Zeus. (laughs) Well, I purge demons and I heal the sick. That's impressive. You're very magical. Uh, Great, Jesus. You know, I'm not saying that Jesus would be unable to do it in that society. 
he would have an immense handicap in any other society besides ancient Israel. It would be barren soil for Jesus' message of salvation. Israel really was the ideal time and place for the Son of God to be born and conduct his ministry. The rest of the world would come later, but Jerusalem, Nazareth, and Bethlehem were the perfect settings for the great gift that is God made flesh. Those are the best answers you can get while asking a question of why Jesus came to be born of Mary in Bethlehem and raised in Nazareth. Now, I promised a speculative idea in addition to those two answers. So here it is, nice and ripe for dinner table conversation. What if Mary said to the angel Gabriel, no thank you? What would have happened if this gospel went the other direction? What if Mary said, I'm not ready, or I'm too scared, or any other response like that? You know, maybe the Holy Spirit would come anyway in spite of her objections. So Gabe says, eh, too bad, and Jesus comes about anyway. It's kind of a horrible idea when you think about it. I actually overheard a couple of guys talking this way in a coffee shop many years ago. Uh, They were talking about how this gospel is actually about how forceful and inflexible God really is. Now, it seemed reasonable that they didn't have any real respect for religion in general. That's not the point. No matter what they believed or disbelieved, they didn't believe that Mary actually had a choice. And the idea of God forcing the Holy Spirit upon her horrified them, and rightly so. That is such a terrible thought. It is inherently contradictory with who we believe God is, first and foremost. A God who respects our free will and identity. So that solution really should be eliminated straight away. It doesn't work because it doesn't line up with God. So maybe the door to salvation would have been closed forever if Mary said no. Maybe the entire salvation of all things really did lay on Mary's shoulders, even if she didn't entirely realize that. Or, the most interesting answer, maybe if she said no, Christ would not have been born in that little obscure village in the Medi- east of the Mediterranean Sea, and maybe, just maybe, Gabriel would just have to try again at some point in the future when conditions would be just right for salvation to be born upon the face of the earth. Now that's all speculation, of course. None of that's official. Maybe you'll think of other answers at dinner tonight about that what-if question. But at the end of the day, we should be sure about one thing. Christ is born of the Virgin Mary as an act of divine grace. A divine grace that that specifically applies to Mary and generally applies to us all. We are all graced by the birth of Christ as surely as we are saved by the death and resurrection of that same Christ, our Lord. That is the foundation of our faith. And we are proud to profess it every time we come together at the altar of Christ.